Welcome to another Dice Cult production. We're interrupting your normal Cthulhu broadcast to bring you a brief interlude um, from our Vampire the Masquerade game. We're gonna we're gonna take a look at um, at, at two antagonists here, um, characters that have been talked about, but we don't really get to see their perspective. Uh, I'm joined tonight by Kyle playing Malcolm Leslie and Mac playing Diana Chatham. Good evening, viewers. So we're going to rewind time to that fateful moment um, and maybe a few minutes before that when Malcolm finds himself hurtling downwards towards the Seattle pavement, 54 stories. Earlier that evening, he'd received a call. A normal call for him and his colleagues, the cleaners, the people that Vampire secret secret. A couple of fledglings that have no sire um, have been reported by a dutiful servant, a dutiful mortal servant of the Camarilla, as maybe needing some re education. And certainly certainly to locate their sire and ascertain their problems. Malcolm made the pickup seamlessly to befuddled delinquents. Not really a problem. You just ask them to get in the car. They get in the car. It's not hard. He uh, ushers them into the elevator, rides it up 54 floors to a whole floor rented out by the prince for exactly the sort of conversations that need to happen. Sterile. Um, cameras that watch some things but not others. and an interrogation takes place. Malcolm needs to know where these children come from. Who are their responsible sires? And you can ask them, but they don't know much. The real truth is in the blood, as any good Tremere knows. And after sampling them, he knows. He has names. People for the Camarilla to go question next. This investigation is opening up. These children were supposed to be accounted for. They were supposed to be riding the Prince's barge, kept in cold storage for a time when kindred society needed them. But somehow they escaped. And the circumstances surrounding that are most certainly suspicious. And to top it all off, he has tasted Jorgen's blood and knows an unfortunate truth for him as a Tremere. That the local regent, Diana Chatham, is almost certainly aware and responsible for this. An old friend of his and in these dire times living under the thumb of the Inquisition, the leader of local Tremere. He 
tries to get more information, but the child knows nothing. He tries to to slow down the investigation. Maybe we just we just need to talk. We just need to get this over to the chantry. We'll sort this out. There's an explanation. I know it. We just we just need to get there first. But Tommy is having none of it. His colleague is is not buying that this young Dramir needs to go anywhere other than straight to the prince. And that's what the law is. We take him straight there. And after that tense conversation, Malcolm walks out into the hallway, observing the elevator. It's active. The light on top dings. The doors open. And out steps this broad-shouldered Amazon in sweatpants. Her eyes lock with his. And standing here on the 54th floor of a bastion of capitalism. Uh, Malcolm is bedecked in a tailored suit, as are all of his companions, as are most of the male figures walking around. Um, she stands out. Uh, a young, Another young woman steps out behind her, dressed for some sort of cocktail party, instead of the business casual you would expect, and hoisting two shotguns. Obviously a problem. Malcolm meets her gaze and commands her to stop. She meets him and her feet freeze, held captive. But he can see the fire in her eyes. He has a wolf by the ears. The moment he breaks his gaze, this will begin to go downhill. And there's a small matter of shotgun blasts going off in the background. He can't worry about that. That's Tommy's problem. He needs to hold this gaze, for better or for worse. And it's gone. His head is seized cracked against the window, and the force of it shatters the window. This is no mortal, if that wasn't already obvious, and the night air whips around him. He closes his eyes as she pummels him. And she pummels him. It's brutal. He can get his arms in the way, but it's 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 a child fighting an adult. But he has something she doesn't, and that is concentration. Uh, his blood and his mind shove her straight up into the ceiling, pushing without pushing. Unfortunately, he is attached to her. And he goes to the ceiling as well. They crash in a heap against the ceiling, held fast for just a moment before landing on their feet. Um, standing on the precipice, she immediately hurls him out the window. Malcolm, the calm tactician, was expecting that and is grateful for it. He meets her gaze again, suspended by his blood and his mind, 54 feet above the Seattle pavement. His mouth begins to move as he's met her gaze. This time, she's going over the edge. 
he can do that with his mind. But before he can speak, she beats him to it. She leaps towards him. They meet in the air. He tries desperately to hold his concentration again. And she pummels him. And they fall. She maintains her grasp longer than he thinks prudent. He, he doesn't know what her plan is or what anybody's plan could have possibly fucking been. And that's it. He doesn't hear the crash. He just, he just takes a moment to think about how stupid this is. And then nothing. Then his next moment of consciousness is to the taste of blood, as most kindred are familiar with. He probably could have figured that out or expected that his next moment of consciousness would be the taste of blood. <sighs> he lies looking up at a single light bulb hanging from a ceiling. He's already instinctively begun to clutch the bag of blood to his mouth and drain it. His body is pain, but for blood it moves. Many, many of the bones inside of him are broken. but he's managed to get himself into a semi-fetal position clutching this bag of blood. And a face looms over him, interrupting the light. Are you awake, child? A woman's voice. Sounds like she's had a smoke. Or two. Or ten years. I'm awake. Where am I? Not downtown Seattle. A bit further south. And who... Who brought me here? Some friends of mine. Does the prince know? He doesn't know anything. It's gonna stay that way. And the fledglings? They made it. Good for them. Do I recognize this person? Um, yeah, you've seen her before in running security around uh, meetings of vampire well-to-do people in the area. You've maybe seen this face. She is, she must be a prominent member of one of the clans. Gangrel, Bruja, one of the ones that doesn't really get along on the camera, though, but shows up to meetings anyways when they think it's important. You think maybe her name is Jessica. She can't be sure. You look a bit familiar. But I'm not even sure if I'm dreaming at this point or not. You probably recognize me. I Why am I here? I think the real question you should be asking yourself is, why did you even wake up? 
I woke up because you gave me blood. You did that for a reason. You brought me here for a reason. You could have just left me there until daylight came. What do you want from me? Why am I here? We brought you here because we needed to be sure. We needed to be sure that you weren't going to talk. And the usual way that we do that is as you guessed, by leaving you to the sun. Well, you could have done that already, but you didn't. So what do you need from me? Your charm are you. Mm -hmm. Never been accused of that before. You're a witch, right? I'm a Tremere. <sighs> well, some of your betters have friends in little places. Hmm. Doesn't sound like any of my friends are involved in this. Everybody's involved for kindred. Then why are we fighting each other? <laughs> well, I said we were involved, not on the same side, hon. Mm. Uh, in the corner, you notice uh, your assistant, Chelsea, a mortal that serves the Camarilla. She was brought here as well. She is folded up on herself in her um, business casual, as you'd expect. She is trying to look as small as she possibly can. They got everybody on your floor. They were thorough, whoever they were, whoever that Amazon was. You don't know where Tommy is, though. It's, I wasn't prepared for, for that. And if I make it out of here, I'm not sure what the prince is going to do with me because I should have been prepared for that. I don't think you need to worry about that. Unless someone changes my mind, you will greet the sun this next morning. Well, I don't think there's very many people that are going to be able to change your mind then. <sighs> yeah. Probably not. I... It irks me to have to ask permission to deal with you, but I'm still going to do it. And then maybe I'll have a think about whether or not killing you without permission is worth it or not. But it never hurts to ask. Whose permission do you need? You... You know who I was there on behalf of. If you're not a, if you're not concerned about offending him, who are you concerned about offending? Is that uh, people don't cross the witches without thinking about it first? We. It's, it's one thing to fight the Camarilla, and of course, that's a thing I'm almost happy to do in many circumstances, but the witches are different. You should know that better than anybody. 
if you if you think people are afraid to cross the Tremere, you should take a look around and see how many of us are left. Stop. Stop trying to sweet talk me into killing you. God damn it. <laughs> if you're going to kill me, then just kill me. Or bring me in front of this person that wants to see me. And we'll go from there. She uh, reaches into her pocket and pulls out a smartphone. You know you shouldn't have that. I shouldn't do lots of stuff. She says, not looking at you while she punches in uh, through the menus into the contact information. She puts the phone to her ear. It rings. Hey, D. You wanted to talk to him? Okay. Chelsea, come here. Okay. She takes the smartphone, holds it up. Chelsea, give me your eyes. She puts it right in front of her face. Breathe in. Breathe out. And that should do it. Okay. She hits the phone, turns off the connection. D, I will, uh, I will leave you to, to speak, your friend. I hope, for both of our sakes. You don't find your humanity tonight. We don't fucking need it. We'll see what comes of it. Thank you very much for your help. I'll leave you two to it. And she turns on her heels, uh, gets to a wooden door, turns back, looks at the both of you two witches suspiciously for a moment in her basement, and then leaves. You can hear her footsteps going up wooden stairs somewhere. How long has it been, Malcolm? Oh, a few years at least. Oh, forgive me while I get a little more comfortable. A bit stuffy. Anyway. You can't be comfortable in that body at all, oh. can you? It suits purposes. But we're not here to talk about me. We're here to talk about you, aren't we? I wouldn't be here if it weren't for you. You're right about that. I wouldn't have been there if it weren't for you. You're also right about that. So why am I here, sister? You were doing your job. As you were tasked to do. You happened to get caught sideways with a little miscommunication, I would say. Miscommunication. What did I mishear? Well, I wouldn't say you misheard anything. I wouldn't say the fault really lies with you, if I'm being honest. I think it's more things further up the chain. But Tremere to Tremere, you understand. We can't get 
too deeply into the inner workings of things. Walls have ears, you know. Uh, your uh, compatriot is holding the most dangerous ears in her pocket as she walks upstairs. You aren't wrong, but... It is my calculation that she'll be more useful than she will be dangerous in the long term. Provided. Provided. The Camarilla find out about nothing that has occurred over the last 72 hours. Why... Why are you working against the Camarilla? I'm not entirely certain I would classify it precisely that way. Against the express orders of the prince, no, I don't believe that argument would hold up in a court of law, but against the Camarilla as a whole, in the interest of it surviving in the long term, no, I'm not against that at all. That's what the Camarilla is trying to do, is make sure as many of us as possible survive. That's why there are rules. You know that's why there are rules. And she's walking around with a smartphone? Malcolm, you and I came about around the same time, didn't we? We did. You've seen what the humans have developed over yes. the last decades. Like, hell, the last 10 years alone. Hmm. There will come a time, very soon, if my calculations are correct, when it will not matter how far we go, how deep we dig, how clandestinely we hide our cubby holes and our headquarters and our plans for the future, they will be found. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Doesn't mean we have to embrace the, the poison pill that they gave us. We don't no. have to use their technology that allows, you know, some little teenager in his mother's basement to track us down and dox us to the world. No, there are rules certainly... for a reason. Yes. And you know well that I'm familiar with them, Malcolm. The reason why you're alive is because we are playing by some of those rules right now. So please, I implore you to mind your tone. I'm half dead already. If there's something you need from me or want from me, tell me what it is. Because these people that you're palling around with are going to get you and a lot of other kindred killed. If things go wrong, they could, yes. Things have already gone wrong. And I don't think you even know what your progeny is capable of. Have you met any kindred in the world that would have made you scrape me off of pavement before? Do you know what that big one can do? Do you know what any of them can do? I'm excited to find out, if I'm being honest. Malcolm, you have to understand, this is a new age, right here, right now. We cannot return to burrowing. We cannot return to medieval thinking. We are Tremere, we think forward. We plan for the future. And the future means we must adapt. We must apply the skill that we have developed over our superior lifespans in order to survive amongst the humans, as we have always done. We've always done that. Uh, kindred have adapted to the printed word. They've adapted to 
the combust internal combustion engine. We've adapted to everything. You know, you and I have adapted from out of the summer of love to through the through the 1980s and 90s to today. You know, we've seen the world change. What we didn't do was fight each other or betray each other and set each other up to be killed in the way that's happened over the past decade. How many Tremere left? And it's not us killing each other, but it's us weakening each other and allowing these vermin to kill us. And you're playing into their hands. Malcolm. We are only playing into their hands if we are walking in blindly. Understand. If we do go through with the prince's plan, how well do you think these layover progeny will actually execute on any order given to them after they've been sprung from their long, unpleasant sleep? Will they have any history with any clan? Will they have any attachment to any law? Will they even regard the prince as prince? You didn't give enough time for them to to learn that. How Why quickly... Why did they stay to learn? <clears throat> Unity is better than disunity. I agree. The kind will always be enemies. They'll always be food. It doesn't mean they need to be a threat. They can't threaten us unless we're dis disunified. 1453. You're an academic. You know that's when Constantinople fell. When the last vestiges of the Roman Empire fell. Sure, the Ottomans arrived with new technology. Knocked down the walls that had stood for centuries and centuries. But you know that the Eastern Roman Empire wasn't at its height or its strength. It was infighting that brought it to where it was, brought it to a level of invulnerability. The kindred have always overcome obstacles, always. But unity, the unity of the Camarilla has always allowed us to overcome anything that humans brought to try to combat us. Now we embrace these changes. We embrace this new technology of theirs and carry it in our very pockets so they can find us, so they can out us. No, so that we can use it against them, Malcolm. So far, that's not the way it's gone, and you know it's not. I understand that. We have not perfected our methods yet. That's part of what's happening here. That's we part have... of what we're trying to accomplish. Do we have time to perfect our methods before they exploit their methods to to bring our end? They're going to drive us, they're going to splinter us and drive us further underground. By my math, if we can get a strong enough foothold in now, before things weaken further, before real disunity sets in. Real disunity like what would set in if the Camarilla were to find out that what has happened in the last 72 hours has happened. Malcolm. If all the pieces fall into place as I judge they will, then, yes, I think we do have time. If, however, the Camarilla find out about the last 72 hours, then not only am I 
personally on the hook. Naturally, I won't be the one executed. It'll be someone else from our clan in my place, weakening us further. Given you are aware that I am in some allegiance with our current host, I do not doubt that it won't take you long to ascertain who she is and for retribution to come to their house as well. And before you know it, a civil war has already begun. It seems to me the first shots in the civil war have already begun. Just nobody's aware who's fired them yet. It's not my intent to start a war, Malcolm. It's my intent to save our kind. And how do you intend to do that? By fracturing the only system of governance we have in place? By investing resources and effort and and lives into overthrowing the prince? Of course not. I'm a Tremere. You know I'm smarter than that. How long I'm not you... going to lay out my entire plan for you here. You understand that, correct? No, you are smarter than that. But how long do you think the prince is going to take to to find out who's keeping his captives just outside of his reach? You may stay one step ahead, but he's going to know who has motivation to do that. It's going to come back around for you. You may think he's chasing you and you're going to turn the wrong corner and his foot's going to be out there to trip you. He has the resources. He has the unity while it lasts of all the clans. My death won't change that. I don't even need to go run to him to tell him. He's going to know one, one, one way or another. And you know it's true. Because like you said, Diana, you're smarter than that. Then please also believe, Malcolm, that I'm smart enough to know how to get out of a jam I've got myself into. I would have believed that about myself at one point until I was dragged out of a window by a very impressive fledgling, no? Yeah, well, she was impressive. Others of them were meeker. Ones I would have uh, expected to be smart enough not to get, to get themselves into that situation given their lineage. Lineage has nothing to do with smarts. Mm. You and I both know that. That said, they're young. They're new. They haven't been given even their training wheels yet, I would I say. I don't know the rules, and you are counting on them as a wild card to not further trip up your plan. They're young. They're stupid. Going. They're yes. ignorant. They're, they are They're unpredictable. They're exactly the kind of chaos that is extremely easy to predict. Honestly. Granted, a couple of curveballs in the last few hours' events. I will own that, yes. A couple of surprises didn't come across my calculations. But, you know, why live forever if you don't live at all, you know? I'm always intrigued by the next generation's advances. And I think that the key to the Camarilla's survival rests in that generation. You might not be wrong, but you saw a lot of things coming and were prepared for them. You're obviously here having a conversation with me back and forth about why I shouldn't be left out to greet the sun. 
do you think there's some reason to save me or are you pressing me for additional information? Because if you thought there was a reason to save me, you would have known I was showing up there in the first place. You would have known I'd have been tapped to deal with this. Why didn't you stop it then? Why are we having this conversation now? Before I fell 70 feet, the hard pavement below. Believe me when I say that was not an intended outcome of that. Because they're chaotic. Yes. Because you can't see what they're going to do. I'm not saying I can account for everything. I'm saying I can account for the most important factors. And then allow enough margin for error to account for the rest. And as for why we're talking about why you shouldn't greet the sun, frankly, you are right. It would make absolutely no difference to our plans whatsoever if you lived or died. But, you know, call me sentimental, but Tremere to Tremere, I think that the weakening of our clan any further is something of... <sighs> a distasteful tragedy that I would like to minimize as much as possible. And we should probably make sure our clan is on the right side of this conflict. That's exactly what I'm hoping to be able to accomplish. Provided, Malcolm, your lips are guaranteed sealed about the events of these last 72 hours. Whatever it takes, Whatever need happen, whomever you have to convince, whatever needs to happen, the Camarilla cannot know. And then you live. And what will they... What sort of answer do you think they would accept from me? that doesn't further put you at a disadvantage. They know whose, whose fledglings those are, whose progeny, they know. Of course they do. It'll only take them so much longer to put two and two together. You know how we Tremere are, Malcolm. Hmm. Wheels within wheels. You don't have all of the pieces. I understand you're concerned. And I understand your concerns. Don't think I don't. I've run them through my calculations. Many times. Not enough so to put a tether on yours. We'll be looking into that. He, uh... He's, he's got a lot to learn. Yes. So did we. And we did. And so will he. And who's guiding him? You've turned him loose with a... With an enormous pugilist. A girl in a cocktail dress. And... I'm not sure what to make of the other one. Just because they have been turned loose doesn't mean that they have nowhere to go. <clears throat> They'll find help when they need it, if they know where to look. Do they know where to look? Do they even know where to begin looking? I think you'd have to ask them that question, not me. I tried to when I was dragged out of a window. <laughs> then I wouldn't suggest asking the question again. Malcolm. Diana. I know that it's in your nature to seek these things out. That's why the Camarilla tapped you. You're valuable to them. You do your job well. And you do our clan very proud. However... These are questions 
that you can ask me all you like, as often as you like, but there is really only so much that I can tell you. And you understand that it is not out of any kind of malice. You know how we Tremere are. I know how we are, and that's what surprises me about how you've gotten yourself into this situation. And I would like to help you as much as you're helping me. But I don't know how to do that at this point. You'll know. I think you're on the wrong path. You haven't told me why it's not the wrong path. We need the little bit of unity that we have. We are stronger together. We are stronger with our numbers intact. I know. So how can I help you, Diana? Because I know you. And sentimentality is not a shade that you wear well. I am only here because you think there is some way I can help you. And I do. And when the time comes, you'll know what to do. I think that you, uh, you assume I have as great a read on chaos as you do. And I'm not sure that's a gift that I possess, but loyalty to the Tremere and a sense of duty to the kindred is what I do possess. And I will do my best. If you can call off your friend up there and I would advise that she get rid of that phone of hers. We'll do what we can about that. I don't think you'll have anything further to worry about. If I'm being frank, I'll have a discussion with my associate and you should be free to go. But Malcolm, I do want you to keep an eye out for those fledglings. I will say again, the Camarilla cannot know about what has happened. You're certainly welcome to remember, but the Camarilla cannot know. They and won't the stay comes, unaware. They won't stay unaware forever, and you know that. I'm not asking you to obfuscate. I'm not asking you to prevent them. I'm simply asking that they don't hear it from you. They won't hear it from me, but... And anyone else that you may speak to, naturally, it can't be traced back to you. I don't even know where Tommy is at this point. I'm in presumably the basement of a stone structure. I don't know who they would hear it from, but they have resources. They're not stupid. They'll know at some point. They will parse this all out. And you and I and your friend that walked up the stairs will all be brought to the light. One day, someday, and I mean, my friend. And I mean the light. So I appreciate you giving me an opportunity to help you run, but that's all we'll be doing. If we bring the Camarilla down, we'll be running and hiding in dark basements forever. Malcolm, please tell me you've heard what we have been discussing. There is no point in this plan where I intend for the Camarilla to fall. So long as you help me, I think that you. this will come together fine. And I want to reiterate, you keep an eye out for those fledglings and we'll be in touch. And I would advise you to keep an eye on your friends. I already do. More than one, as often as they can be spared. 
I appreciate your sentimentality. You yeah. know that we both don't wear that shade well. Thank you nonetheless. Absolutely. I would not see a fellow Tremere thrown to the sun quite so easily. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go inquire with our host, and you should be able to go soon. What time of day is it? <laughs> it is, uh, it's your internal vampire clock tells you. Uh, probably two more hours till dawn. All right. Goodbye, Diana. I think, uh, I think I'd like to see you again soon, but we'll see. We'll see. Take care, Malcolm. And take care of yourself. I always do. Um, Malcolm, do you remain in place? Yeah, I think Malcolm is just going to lay back down and, uh, if there's any more blood around, gonna try and get his hands on that, but <laughs> but he's yeah, he, I don't think he's got very many other options. He's strange he's that you should say that, Malcolm, because after a few moments, Diana's gaze weakens and fades and drops to the floor. And you do have thoughts about blood. And there is some blood nearby. And I think, uh... With all due regret and sentimentality, he's going to feed. Malcolm takes hold of Chelsea's wrist. She is barely loosened. Perhaps by choice, perhaps not. Perhaps Diana has pushed her not just into the back seat of her mind, but all the way into the trunk. But she does not resist. You lift her wrist to your mouth and take it. Uh, she is healthy. She can sate your hunger, but to sate all of it, you would have to hear the sound of her last heartbeat. How how far does this go towards healing him any degree? Uh, you can sate your hunger um, and begin to heal. Uh, if you uh, will your flesh to heal, you are so broken at this point that you know that you could. And you could... Drink until you have no hunger, and then will your flesh to heal. And you would get some of the way back. Maybe you'd be able to walk with a mild limp. But if you remain draining her and command your blood to work, that 
that is a feedback loop that only leads to one place. I think that Malcolm, having been shown an act of mercy, presumably at one point already today, is going to extend that mercy to to this woman, and he won't completely slake his thirst. He will he will hold back. As you finish, and Chelsea, just her body um, behaving at its basis level, loses its strength. Her arm reaches out to the adobe wall behind her, uh, steadies herself, and she slides down it. falling completely into slumber. Her body makes a mild thud, but that is enough for you to hear footsteps on the stairwell. A knock at the door. Are you two finished? There's only one now. The same woman enters the door. You, you heard her name. It was Jessica. I suppose she pulls out her smartphone again. Opens up text messaging application. Starts punching away. Diana, you get a text message. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. Diana's text message goes back. Thumbs up. I'm assuming we're not going by ancient Roman uh, <laughs> practices. Otherwise, that was the opposite of the intent I meant to give. That is a thought that would indeed occur to Diana. She is a student of the Latin, <laughs> but she's also aware that Jessica is not. Bingo. You're always safe texting the plebs. It's fine. <laughs> huh. You joining the winning team? Joining your team, I'm not sure if it's the winning team at this point. But I am joining nonetheless. You gonna go back? Pretend like nothing happened? I don't think I'm capable of going back at this point. I need to rest and recover. But once we figure out how I can help, then we'll go from there. There's no way I walk through the doors and pretend nothing happened at this point. Well, thank God. I can hardly walk. We fucking agree about that. <laughs> if you go back there, you're either going to spill your guts or you're going to spill your guts. They're going to get it out of you. <laughs> That's, there's really no way around that one. It's either you spill your guts or they spill your guts. Uh, look, uh, since you're on the team, you're in a basement in Tacoma. Got an apartment. Uh, on the south side of the water. You can have it for the next couple nights. You, she want anything from you? You just hanging out, staying quiet? Because that's fine by me as long as you 
stay fucking put. I'll be very quiet and very still. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> I'm I'm not quite brave enough to call you an Uber <laughs> to my to my apartment. Um, I'll, I'll have somebody drive you. She mm. reaches into her pocket and jingle. She throws a set of keys at you. Simple. It's just like two keys, two house keys. It looks like a deadbolt and a doorknob lock. Do you know what's... You know the tall one. The big one. The one that did this to me. I... Do you know what she's capable of? Well, my academic friend, uh, I would say that that's a typical gangrel response to men in suits. Mm. So, yeah. Never quite been caught off guard like that by... By any kindred, gangrel or not. And I imagine you witches put a lot of thought into never being in that situation to begin with. Don't intend to. She moves out of the way of the door. You better get going. There's not many hours left in the night. And... Malcolm's gonna limp his way up the stairs. The floorboards creak, and that is where we are gonna leave it this evening. Thank you for joining us. Thank, thank you, Mac and, and Kyle, for playing. It was a blast. Thank you, Nathan. <laughs> Uh, I was I loved having you. Thank you for that was a, that was a great scene. Um, as as I understand it, we are returning to Vampire next week. Um, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that it's uh, gonna be next Saturday night as we are running into Easter. We had some other plans, but I think we're gonna stick to Saturday night at least for next week. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like uh, maybe some of us might have stuff going on Easter Sunday. I mean, some of us. Not necessarily <laughs> all of us, but, you know, maybe some of us. And I think, uh, uh, as far as I know, Cthulhu will be back uh, the following week. Uh, and That's my understanding. And Monday nights uh, on the backs of gods will be with us. Pew, 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 pew. Yes, indeed. Oh, my goodness. On the Backs of Gods is ramping up into our final, you know, I guess, couple sessions of the quest line. Finally getting back to Galunder and finding out what's happening there. Um, but next week, we're actually taking a little time outside of story to uh, answer some questions, have a bit of a chat sesh, not dislike uh, or rather, unlike the one that uh, we held for Call of Cthulhu a little minute back. Just a lot more sessions in the back catalog to <laughs> field questions about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. So uh, start getting those questions ready, y'all. Start putting them in the spinners. Get ready, because Monday is going to be your chance to tell us what nonsense you thought we should have knocked off way at the start of the <laughs> entire series. <laughs> and lastly, Legends of the Aea, uh, Tuesday nights, D&D 5e, uh, classic D&D um, &D in the sense that you can count on somebody being punched in the face. A hundred percent, way more frequently than this boring I session. I know, we Am just, I right? <laughs> no Ooh, one was we just punched. talked? Nobody got punched or stabbed or defenestrated. I'm <laughs> frankly outraged. A waste of everyone's time. A hundred percent, who needed any of this? <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Thank we you, Nathan. See, we will see you Monday night for On the Backs of Gods. 
Have a good See one. you Monday, folks. Come join us.